Now, um, in terms of the power, uh, we covered the uh, uh, replacement of power, the, the alternatives, um, having generators, batteries, so forth. Um, but there is another factor. Now, this, uh, I don't know, does it come here in physical security when we're talking about um, power, or does it come in uh, telecommunications when we're talking about networking? So uh, we'll talk about it here, and maybe we'll talk about it again when we get into telecommunications. No guarantees. Uh, so might as well cover it here so that uh, at least it is covered. And that is the, uh, the noise, um, both in, in terms of the noise uh, for power supplies. And, and I mean, you know, we talked about s spikes and so forth. And um, there is uh, electromagnetic interference, radio frequency interference, that can um, potentially do things to your power. Um, it's less likely. Um, uh, power, as I say, you know, tends to be a bit more robust, and the the minor variations that electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference uh, do in terms of the uh, the power and power line power um, is is going to be less of a factor but it is there and it is something that you should pay attention to um, it tends to affect the communications itself more and there's a there's a couple of examples here um, I uh, you know, first network I put in for uh, an office, um, I, eh, well, I certainly didn't know as much then as I know now, but in any case, um, the, uh, I figured, okay, drop ceiling, no problems, we'll just, uh, you know, string the lights up there, uh, sorry, string the, uh, the cables up there. Now, I didn't have too much of a problem with it, because... I was using coaxial cable. It was thin net, um, but even so, because it's coaxial cable, it's a little bit um, shielded uh, just from the um, you know, physical composition of, of the coaxial cable. So um, I didn't have problems. Um, but then when I did uh, uh, something similar, well, it wasn't... I wasn't doing it. The company uh, that I went to work for, they had already uh, done a bunch of stuff uh, in terms of uh, stringing the, the cables through. And the thing is that back in those days, I mean, nowadays everybody's using LEDs probably. Um, you're not going to encounter fluorescent lights um, as much. Although, you know, in older buildings, you're still going to find them. And the thing is that they generate an awful lot of radio frequency interference because they are essentially a huge spark gap. And so it's, uh, you know, it's transmitting something that uh, can uh, affect the electrical system and certainly can affect um, the noise on uh, networking systems. So, um, you know, stringing uh, network cabling alongside, in between, over, under, uh, fluorescence is not a great idea. Um, now, the, the company that I went to work for that had more of a problem with this situation, they had another problem, too. That nobody had ever heard of half wavelength, and uh, so they just cut the cables to whatever length they thought they needed. Um, and... Uh, the half wavelength is there for a reason. You know, if you don't do that, if you don't terminate the cables properly and do it at the right length, um, then you get a lot of reflections of signals within the cable. And um, in this particular case, uh, when we did some analysis on it, it was like 90% of the 
the packets were being corrupted because of uh, this type of noise in the system. So, uh, lots of problems in that particular case. Um, now, another uh, possibility, well, story here. Um, this goes back to Novell days, and I don't know if it, anybody even remembers Novell, but they were sort of the original networking guys for uh, personal computers, for microcomputers, um, particularly in the business and office space. And um, I remember them uh, doing a presentation for us, and the guy who was there um, had been at... Uh, uh, headquarters recently and they had told him uh, some stories. They had recently moved um, from their original location in Utah to a location um, in California. Now, when they were in Utah, they had basically a mountain range between them and the eastern United States. So, having uh, you know, electromagnetic interference was just a non-issue. When they moved to California, uh, it was a little bit of a different situation. Um, they were right beside a field um, which was strung with cable, which was, in fact, the antenna for communication, long-range communication, with the submarine fleet, nuclear submarine fleet. And of course, you know, it's fairly specialized uh, <clears throat> powerful signals to try and communicate with a submarine underwater. So, um, then uh, across the street from them was a building called the Blue Cube. Um, this was, in fact, the Air Force's version of the NSA. And uh, they had, uh, you know, it, basically, um, it, Novell's new location was sitting between the, uh, you know, this great big microwave dish and Russia. So um, the Basically, in Utah, they used unshielded twisted pair. They didn't need anything else. There wasn't any noise um, significant enough to worry about it. Um, when they moved to California, uh, you know, they originally installed all the cable that they had brought with them and then realized, no, this wasn't going to work. Uh, so they had to replace all the unshielded twisted pair with shielded twisted pair. Again, because of the noise, electromagnetic interference, radio frequency interference. Now, the guy who told us this uh, told us that there was some advantage to this situation. You could leave your coffee cup on the desk and it would stay warm for hours.